Created in December 1949, the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East UNRWA, is a relief and human development agency which supports more than 5 million registered Palestinian refugees, and their patrilineal descendants, who fled or were expelled from their homes during the 1948 Palestine War as well as those who fled or were expelled during and following the 1967 Six-Day War. Originally intended to provide jobs on public works projects and direct relief, today UNRWA provides education, health care, and social services to the population it supports. Aid is provided in five areas of operation, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. Aid for Palestinian refugees outside these five areas is provided by UNHCR. It also provided relief to Jewish and Arab Palestine refugees inside the State of Israel following the 1948 conflict until the Israeli government took over responsibility for Jewish refugees in 1952. In the absence of a solution to the Palestine refugee problem, the UN General Assembly has repeatedly renewed UNRWA's mandate, most recently extending it until 30 June 2020. Jared Kushner, senior advisor to the President of the United States and the U.S. broker for peace talks, has advocated a sincere effort to disrupt UNRWA as part of the Trump administration's proposals for the Middle East, since according to Kushner it perpetuates a status quo, is corrupt, inefficient and doesn't help peace. UNRWA is the only UN agency dedicated to helping refugees from a specific region or conflict and is separate from UNHCR. Formed in 1950, UNHCR is the main UN refugee agency, which is responsible for aiding other refugees all over the world. Unlike UNRWA, UNHCR has a specific mandate to aid its refugees to eliminate their refugee status by local integration in current country, resettlement in a third country or repatriation when possible. UNRWA allows refugee status to be inherited by descendants of male refugee, including legally adopted children. Topic. History and mandate UNRWA was established following the 1948 Arab-Israeli War by the United Nations General Assembly under Resolution 302 IV of 8 December 1949. This resolution reaffirmed paragraph 11, concerning refugees, of UN General Assembly Resolution 194 1948, adopted and passed unopposed, supported by Israel and the Arab states, with only the Soviet bloc and South Africa abstaining. UNRWA is a subsidiary organ of the United Nations General Assembly and its mandate is renewed every three years. UNRWA has had to develop a working definition of refugee to allow it to provide humanitarian assistance. Its definition does not cover final status. Palestine refugees are defined as Persons whose regular place of residence was Palestine during the period 1 June 1946 to 15 May 1948, and who lost both home and means of livelihood as a result of the 1948 conflict. UNRWA services are available to all those living in its area of operations who meet this definition, who are registered with the agency, and who need assistance. The descendants of Palestine refugee males, including adopted children, are also eligible for registration as refugees. When the agency began operations in 1950, it was responding to the needs of about 750,000 Palestine refugees. 2014, some 5 million Palestine refugees were registered as eligible for UNRWA services. UNRWA provides facilities in 59 recognized refugee camps in Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip, and in other areas where large numbers of registered Palestine refugees live outside of recognized camps. For a camp to be recognized by UNRWA, there must be an agreement between the host government and UNRWA governing use of the camp. UNRWA does not itself run camps, has no police powers or administrative role, but simply provides services in the camp. Refugee camps, which developed from tent cities to dense urban dwellings similar to their urban surroundings, house around one-third of all registered Palestine refugees. Topic. Organization 
UNRWA is the largest agency of the United Nations, employing over 30,000 staff, 99% of which are locally recruited Palestinians. UNRWA's headquarters are divided between the Gaza Strip and Amman. Its operations are organized into five fields Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, West Bank, and Gaza. UNRWA's Commissioner General is the Swiss Pierre Kreinbull, who succeeded Italian national Filippo Grandi on 30 March 2014. The Commissioner General is responsible for managing UNRWA's overall activities. In each area where UNRWA operates, there is a director in charge of distributing humanitarian aid and overseeing general UNRWA operations. The public face of UNRWA is spokesman Chris Gunnis. Topic. Advisory Commission UN Resolution 302 IV, adopted on 8 December 1949, created an advisory commission tasked with advising and assisting the Commissioner-General of UNRWA in carrying out the agency's mandate. It is not a governing body as many other UN agencies maintain, but serves in a purely advisory capacity. Consisting of five members when it was first created, the Advisory Commission ADCOM currently has 27 members and three observers. The ADCOM meets twice a year, usually in June and November, to discuss issues of importance to UNRWA. Members and observers meet more regularly through subcommittee meetings. Topic. Members of the Advisory Commission Membership in the Advisory Commission is obtained through resolution of the UN General Assembly. All countries considered as hosts of Palestine refugees Jordan, Syria, Lebanon sit on the Advisory Commission, and 24 countries who are major supporters sit on the Commission. In addition, Palestine, the European Union, and the League of Arab States have had observer status on the Commission since 2005. The full list of ADCOM members, including the year they joined, are Australia 2005, Belgium 1953, Brazil 2014, Canada 2005, Denmark 2005, Egypt 1949, Finland 2008, France 1949, Germany 2005, Ireland 2008, Italy 2005, Japan 1973, Jordan 1949, Kazakhstan 2013, Kuwait 2010, Lebanon 1953, Luxembourg 2012, Netherlands 2005, Norway 2005, Saudi Arabia 2005, Spain 2005, Sweden 2005, Switzerland 2005, Syrian Arab Republic 1949, Turkey 1949, United Arab Emirates 2014, United Kingdom 1949, United States 1949 Topic. Funding In 2009, UNRWA's total budget was US$1.2 billion, for which the agency received US$948 million. In 2009, the retiring Commissioner General spoke of a $200 million shortfall in UNRWA's budgets. Officials in 2009 spoke of a dire financial crisis. In 2010, the biggest donors for its regular budget were the United States and the European Commission with $248 million and $165 million, respectively. Sweden $47 million, the United Kingdom $45 million, Norway $40 million, and the Netherlands $29 million are also important donors. In addition to its regular budget, UNRWA receives funding for emergency activities and special projects. In 2011, the United States was the largest single donor with a total contribution of over $239 million, followed by the European Commission's $175 million contribution. According to World Bank data, for all countries receiving more than $2 billion international aid in 2012, Gaza and the West Bank received a per capita aid budget over double the next largest recipient, at a rate of $495. In 2013, $1.1 billion 
was donated to UNRWA, of which $294 million was contributed by the United States. Until 2018, most of UNRWA's funding came from European countries and the United States. In 2016, the United States donated $368 million to the agency and $350 million in 2017. In August 2018, the United States stopped giving aid to UNRWA, representing a cut of $300 million United States dollars in the US$1.2 billion United States dollars budget and contributing to an overall deficit of US$446 million, United States dollars, which was then covered with increased contributions from elsewhere. The situation for 2019 and beyond was discussed at a ministerial strategic dialogue attended by representatives from Egypt, France, Germany, Japan, Kuwait, Norway, United Kingdom, the European External Action Service and the European Commission. Topic: <laughs> Operations. Services provided by UNRWA include health care, education, relief, and social services and micro-credit loan programs. In the following, UNRWA's own descriptions of itself are summarized. <laughs> <laughs> education program UNRWA operates one of the largest school systems in the Middle East. It has been the main provider of basic education to Palestinian refugee children since 1950. The education program is UNRWA's largest area of activity, accounting for half of its regular budget and 70% of its staff. Basic education is available to all registered refugee children free of charge up to around the age of 15. In the 1960s, UNRWA schools became the first in the region to achieve full gender equality. Half the Palestine refugee population is under 25. Overcrowded classrooms containing 40 or even 50 pupils are common. Almost three quarters run on a double shift system, where two separate groups of pupils and teachers share the same buildings, thus reducing teaching time. The school year is often interrupted by conflicts and children are often marked by trauma. Key 2014 figures 476,323 students 703 schools 50% female students 23,366 educational staff 755 United States dollars annual cost per student. UNRWA also operates nine vocational and technical training colleges, two educational science faculties, and two teacher training institutes. Per long standing agreement, UNRWA schools follow the curriculum of their host countries. This allows UNRWA pupils to progress to further education or employment holding locally recognized qualifications and complies with the sovereignty requirements of countries hosting refugees. Wherever possible, UNRWA students take national exams conducted by the host governments. Pupils at UNRWA schools often outperform government school pupils in these state exams. Not all refugee children attend UNRWA schools. In Jordan and Syria, children have full access to government schools and many attend those because they are close to where they reside. Topic. Relief and Social Services Program In Palestinian refugee society, families without a male breadwinner are often very vulnerable. Those headed by a widow, a divorcee, or a disabled father often live in dire poverty. These families are considered hardship cases and constitute less than 6% of UNRWA beneficiaries. UNRWA provides food aid, cash assistance, and help with shelter repairs to these families. In addition children from special hardship case families are given preferential access to the agency's vocational training centers, while women in such families are encouraged to join UNRWA's women's program centers. In these centers, training, advice, and childcare are available to encourage female refugees' social development. UNRWA has created community-based organizations CBOs, to target women, refugees with disabilities, and to look after the needs of children. The CBOs now have their own management committees staffed by volunteers from the community. 
UNRWA provides them with technical and small sums of targeted financial assistance, but many have formed links of their own with local and international NGOs. Topic: <laughs> Health program. Since 1950, UNRWA has been the main healthcare provider for Palestinian refugees. Basic health needs are met through a network of primary care clinics, providing access to secondary treatment in hospitals, food aid to vulnerable groups, and environmental health in refugee camps. Key figures for 2014 are 139 primary health facilities based in or near UNRWA settlements, camps 3,107 health staff 3,134,732 refugees accessing health services 9,290,197 annual patient visits The health of Palestine refugees has long resembled that of many populations in transition from developing world to developed world status. However, there is now a demographic transition. People are living longer and developing different needs, particularly those related to non-communicable diseases NCDs and chronic conditions that require lifelong care, such as diabetes, hypertension, and cancer. A healthy life is a continuum of phases from infancy to old age, each of which has unique, specific needs, and our program therefore takes a life cycle approach to providing its package of preventive and curative health services. To address the changing needs of Palestine refugees, we undertook a major reform initiative in 2011. We introduced the Family Health Team FHT approach, based on the World Health Organization indicated values of primary health care, in our primary health facilities PHFs. The FHT offers comprehensive primary health care services based on holistic care of the entire family, emphasizing long-term provider-patient relationships and ensuring person-centeredness, comprehensiveness, and continuity. Moreover, the FHT helps address intersectional issues that impact health, such as diet and physical activity, education, gender-based violence, child protection, poverty, and community development. Medical services include outpatient care, dental treatment, and rehabilitation for the physically disabled. Maternal and Child Health Care is a priority for UNRWA's health program. School health teams and camp medical officers visit UNRWA schools to examine new pupils to aid early detection of childhood diseases. All UNRWA clinics offer family planning services with counseling that emphasizes the importance of birth spacing as a factor in maternal and child health. Agency clinics also supervise the provision of food aid to nursing and pregnant mothers who need it, and six clinics in the Gaza Strip have their own maternity units. Infant mortality rates have for some time been lower among refugees than the World Health Organization's benchmark for the developing world. UNRWA provides refugees with assistance in meeting the costs of hospitalization either by partially reimbursing them, or by negotiating contracts with government, NGOs, and private hospitals. UNRWA's Environmental Health Services Program controls the quality of drinking water, provides sanitation, and carries out vector and rodent control in refugee camps, thus reducing the risk of epidemics. Topic. UNRWA Microfinance Department UNRWA's Microfinance Department MD aims to alleviate poverty and support economic development in the refugee community by providing capital investment and working capital loans at commercial rates. The program seeks to be as close to self-supporting as possible. It has a strong record of creating employment, generating income, and empowering refugees. The Microfinance Department is an autonomous financial unit within UNRWA, established in 1991 to provide microfinance services to Palestine refugees, as well as poor or marginal groups living and working in close proximity to them. With operations in three countries, the MD currently has the broadest regional coverage of any microfinance institution in the Middle East. Having begun its operations in the Palestinian territories, it remains the largest non-bank financial intermediary in the West Bank and Gaza. Key figures, cumulative as of 2014 are 
324,994 number of loans awarded 368 United States dollars 1 million value of loans awarded 33% youth outreach 38% women outreach Topic. Emergency operations UNRWA takes a wide variety of action to mitigate the effects of emergencies on the lives of Palestine refugees. Particularly in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip occupied Palestinian territory opt, there has been ongoing intervention made necessary by, e.g., the 1967 war as well as the First and Second Intifadas, and the 2014 Gaza War. Up until this point, the reconstruction work at Nahr el baird Palestine Refugee Camp in Lebanon has been the largest reconstruction project ever undertaken by UNRWA. This work began in 2009, and was made necessary when the camp was destroyed in the fighting between the Lebanese Armed Forces and Fatah al-Islam in 2007. UNRWA evaluates the ongoing conflict in Syria as one of the most serious challenges ever. UNRWA supports Palestinians' refugees, both those displaced within Syria and those who have fled to neighboring countries within the UNRWA areas of operations. Services range from supplying temporary shelter, water, food, clothing, and blankets to temporary job creation and help for rebuilding. There is extensive cooperation with other international NGOs and local actors. Topic. Infrastructure and camp – settlement improvement About one-third of the five million refugees registered with the agency live in recognized camps, settlements in Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip. To date, UNRWA has participated in Ray building 5,223 homes in Nahr el baird in northern Lebanon and has initiated a recovery and reconstruction plan for Gaza including clinics, schools, and housing units. Special funding has been provided by Saudi Arabia, Japan, the Netherlands, and the United Arab Emirates. Topic. Praise. In the time frame 1998-2009, some of the most notable praise and appreciation has been expressed by the Nobel Peace Laureates Mairead Corrigan Maguire and Kofi Annan, by the President of the General Assembly of the United Nations, by UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, and by representatives from the European Union, the United States, the Netherlands, Japan, Bangladesh, Cyprus, Jordan, Ghana, and Norway, among others. In 2007, the permanent representative of Norway to the United Nations described his country as a strong supporter of UNRWA, which acts as a safety net for the Palestine refugees, providing them with immediate relief, basic services and the possibility of a life in dignity. The same day, the representative of Iceland praised the fact that Despite times of exceptional hardship and suffering in the region, UNRWA has been able to deliver substantial results. On the humanitarian front, UNRWA played a central role in easing the suffering of both refugees and Lebanese civilians during its emergency operations in Lebanon and on the Gaza Strip. Under often life-threatening conditions, UNRWA's staff showed relentless dedication to the agency's responsibilities. In 2007 Gershon Kedar, Israel's delegate to the Fourth Committee, confirmed Israel's support for the UNRWA. My delegation wishes to inform the committee that despite our concerns regarding the politicization of UNRWA, Israel supports its humanitarian mission, and will continue to work in a spirit of dialogue and cooperation with the agency under the leadership of its Commissioner General, Karen Honing Abuzaid. Topic. MOPAN assessment In 2011 UNRWA agreed to be assessed as a multilateral organization by the Multilateral Organization Performance Assessment Network MOPAN. MOPAN is network of donor countries with a common interest in assessing the organizational effectiveness of multilateral organizations. 
MOPAN was established in 2002 in response to international fora on aid effectiveness and calls for greater donor harmonization and coordination. Today 2011, MOPAN is made up of 16 donor countries, Australia, Austria, Belgium, Canada, Denmark, Finland, France, Germany, Ireland, the Netherlands, Norway, Republic of Korea, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. MOPAN assessments provide a snapshot of four dimensions of organizational effectiveness strategic management, operational management, relationship management, and knowledge management. MOPAN does not examine an organization's development results. The MOPAN report evaluated a number of criteria positively. In UNRWA's response, the agency was pleased to note that many of the challenges highlighted in the report reflect challenges within most, if not all, multilateral organizations. Topic: Criticism and controversies. After 65 years, UNRWA may have become a nation and subculture unto itself. As Emmanuel Marx and Nitza Nakmias pointed out in 2004, most of the criticism concerns UNRWA showing the pathology of aging, including symptoms of inflexibility, resistance to adjust to the changing political environment, and refusal to phase out and transfer its responsibilities to the Palestinian Authority. UNRWA initiated a reform program based on organizational development to improve efficiency in 2007. As mentioned in another section, UNRWA participated in a 2011 review of its internal practices. No follow up can be identified. In addition to challenges in internal operations, there are some more difficult issues which have been pointed out, especially, but not solely, by Israel and pro Israel groups. UNRWA has been accused of hiring known militants, perpetuating Palestinian dependency, demonizing Israel, and funneling money from Western governments to line the pockets of the Palestinian Authority and purchasing arms for terrorists. Topic. Mandate-related controversies Topic. The mandate itself, including the definition of refugees. The UNRWA definition is meant solely to determine eligibility for UNRWA assistance. However, some argue it serves to perpetuate the conflict. Under General Assembly Resolution 194-3, of of December 1948, other persons may be eligible for repatriation and or compensation, but are not necessarily eligible for relief under the UNRWA's working definition. Topic. Creating dependency rather than resettling refugees Although UNRWA's mandate is only relief and works, the Wall Street Journal Europe edition, published an op-ed by Asaf Romorowski and Alexander H. Joff in April 2011 saying that despite UNRWA's purported goal, it is hard to claim that the UNRWA has created any Palestinian institutions that foster a genuinely civil society. Ideally the UNRWA would be disbanded and Palestinians given the freedom, and the responsibility, to build their own society. The High Commission is mandated to help refugees get on with their lives as quickly as possible, and works to settle them rapidly, most frequently in countries other than those they fled. UNRWA policy, however, states that the Palestinian Arabs who fled from Israel in the course of the 1948 war, plus all their descendants, are to be considered refugees until a just and durable solution can be found by political actors. UNRWA was specifically designed not to prescribe how the outcome of an agreement would take shape. James G. Lindsay, a former UNRWA general counsel and fellow researcher for Washington Institute for Near East Policy, published a report for WINEP in 2009 in which he criticized UNRWA practices. One of his conclusions was that UNRWA's failure to match UNHCR's success in resettling refugees obviously represents a political decision on the part of the agency and 
seems to favor the strain of Palestinian political thought espoused by those who are intent on a return to the land that is now Israel. However, UNRWA has never been given a mandate by the UN General Assembly to resettle refugees. In 2010 John Jing, head of UNRWA Gaza, had stated that he was disappointed in Linde's criticisms of UNRWA for failure to resettle refugees. Jing argued that there is no basis to say that it is UNRWA's decision because our mandate is given to us. I agree that it is a political failure, but we don't set up the mandate, we are only the implementers. In 2006, the UNRWA drew criticism from the U.S. Congressman Mark Kirk and Stephen Rothman. Their letter, sent to the U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice, stated in part, after an exhaustive review of the UN's own audit, it is clear UNRWA is wrought by mismanagement, ineffective policies, and failure to secure its finances. We must upgrade UNRWA's financial controls, management, and enforcement of U.S. law that bars any taxpayer dollars from supporting terrorists. UNRWA responded by showing the results of its school students in Syria and Jordan, who outperform their peers in host government schools. UNRWA also mentioned the difficult conditions in which it operates, its refugee load increased much faster than its budget, while the tightening of the closure regime since the Second Intifada deeply affected the humanitarian situation in the former Israeli occupied territories. Senator Kit Bond Armo, said that UNRWA is an example of a United Nations anti Israel bias, and that Palestine refugees should be treated the same as all others with refugee status around the world. In 2011, UNRWA spokesman Chris Gunnis wrote Palestinian refugees continue to be refugees because the issues which cause their exile remain outstanding. Only by addressing in a just and durable fashion the underlying causes of conflict, and by doing so in accordance with international law and the rights of refugees, can the refugee issue be laid to rest. This is the responsibility of the parties and international political actors. It is wishful, cynical thinking to suppose that Palestinian refugees can be made to go away by dispersing them around the globe or by dissolving the agency established to protect and assist them pending a just and lasting solution to their plight. Source, Huffington Post. In 2014 Bassam Eid, director of the Palestinian Human Rights Monitoring Group, accused UNRWA of perpetuating the refugee status of Palestinians. He wrote, UNRWA, to continue its operation, depends on death and the visual suffering of 5 million Palestinians who continue to languish in and around UNRWA facilities. He concluded, in the eyes of the Palestinians, UNRWA acts a state with its own foreign policy. And that foreign policy does not serve the best interests of the Palestinian refugees. Eid's article, however, has been the subject of criticism for its widespread inaccuracies and almost verbatim paraphrasing of another UNRWA critic. According to McGill University political science professor Rex Brennan, one could go on picking holes in the Eid op ed for some considerable time. However, what was also striking was the extent to which his piece seemed to simply paraphrase points that were made back in October by perennial anti UNRWA gadfly David Bedin of the right wing Eretz Shiva News Service. Also published in the Jerusalem Post, UNRWA rejected claims that it supports extremism, or is anti-Israel, and defended its record on the effectiveness of our efforts on neutrality. <laughs> <laughs> Execution-related controversies Protection of Palestinian refugees ASEM Khalil, Associate Professor of Law at Burtzeit University, and Dean of the Faculty of Law and Public Administration, has focused on human rights issues for Palestinians in host countries. After systematically documenting the human rights situation for Palestinians in Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, and Syria, he concludes, the point this approach is stresses, I believe, is not that UNRWA is not necessary or that Palestinian refugeehood is not unique and special, but rather that UNRWA is not currently capable of ensuring necessary protection for Palestinian refugees, and that host Arab states cannot use the uniqueness of Palestinian refugeehood to continue upholding discriminatory laws and policies towards Palestinian refugees.
The global financial crisis may result in decreasing international funds to UNRWA, and UNRWA may be pushed towards reducing its services. Such a scenario will be felt by Palestinian refugees in particular ways, seeing the absence of alternative sources of income and the restrictive laws and policies that exist in some host countries. UNRWA is a main service provider for Palestinian refugees in host countries. It provides jobs for thousands of refugees, education, health care, and various other services that are extremely valuable and necessary. The issue at stake here is that UNRWA is not enough, but the alternative is not the replacement of UNRWA by UNHCR, rather the enhancement of the protection role of UNRWA, or the extension of protection mandate of UNHCR to Palestinian refugees besides not instead existing agencies dealing with Palestinian refugees. Topic. Textbook controversy In 2005 Nathan Brown, professor of political science at George Washington University, wrote a short but comprehensive review article about textbooks used by Palestinians, focusing especially on changes starting in 1994. The Oslo agreements resulted in the dismantling of the Israeli office responsible for censorship of textbooks. Administration of the education system for all Palestinian students in the West Bank and Gaza was taken over by the Palestinian Authority PA. Other Palestinian schools administered by UNRWA in neighboring countries were unaffected. With the end of UNESCO monitoring of the books, UNRWA moved to develop supplementary materials to teach tolerance in the schools it administered. It is the PA textbooks used in UNRWA schools in the West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem that have been most extensively studied. The following discussions cannot be generalized to UNRWA schools elsewhere. In the beginning, the PA used books from Jordan and Egypt. In 2000 it started issuing its own books. Nathan Brown investigated the differences between the new PA books and the ones being replaced regarding the Palestinian Authority's new textbooks, he states. The new books have removed the anti-Semitism present in the older books while they tell history from a Palestinian point of view, they do not seek to erase Israel, delegitimize it or replace it with the State of Palestine. Each book contains a foreword describing the West Bank and Gaza as the two parts of the homeland. The maps show some awkwardness but do sometimes indicate the 1967 line and take some other measures to avoid indicating borders. In this respect, they are actually more forthcoming than Israeli maps. The books avoid treating Israel at length but do indeed mention it by name. The new books must be seen as a tremendous improvement from a Jewish, Israeli, and humanitarian view. They do not compare unfavorably to the material my son was given as a fourth grade student in a school in Tel Aviv. Brown has pointed out that research into Palestinian textbooks conducted by the Center for Monitoring the Impact of Peace in 1998 is misleading, because it evaluates the old books, and in 2000, its research mixed old and new books. In 2002, the United States Congress requested the United States Department of State to commission a reputable NGO to conduct a review of the new Palestinian curriculum. The Israel-Palestine Center for Research and Information IPCRI, was thereby commissioned by the U.S. Embassy in Tel Aviv and the U.S. Consul General in Jerusalem to review the Palestinian Authority's textbooks. Its report was completed in March 2003 and delivered to the State Department for submission to Congress. Its executive summary states. The overall orientation of the curriculum is peaceful despite the harsh and violent realities on the ground. It does not openly incite against Israel and the Jews. It does not openly incite hatred and violence. Religious and political tolerance is emphasized in a good number of textbooks and in multiple contexts. IPCRI's June 2004 follow up report notes that, except for calls for resisting occupation and oppression, no signs were detected of outright promotion of hatred towards Israel, Judaism, or Zionism. And that, tolerance, as a concept, runs across the new textbooks. The report also stated that, 
Textbooks revealed numerous instances that introduce and promote the universal and religious values and concepts of respect of other cultures, religions, and ethnic groups, peace, human rights, freedom of speech, justice, compassion, diversity, plurality, tolerance, respect of law, and environmental awareness. However, the IPCRI noted a number of deficiencies in the curriculum. The practice of appropriating sites, areas, localities, geographic regions, etc. inside the territory of the State of Israel as Palestine, Palestinian observed in our previous review, remains a feature of the newly published textbooks 4th and 9th grade laying substantive grounds to the contention that the Palestinian Authority did not in fact recognize Israel as the state of the Jewish people. The summary also states that the curriculum asserts a historical Arab presence in the region, while the Jewish connection to the region, in general, and the Holy Land, in particular, is virtually missing. This lack of reference is perceived as tantamount to a denial of such a connection, although no direct evidence is found for such a denial. Quote, it also notes that Terms and passages used to describe some historical events are sometimes offensive in nature and could be construed as reflecting hatred of and discrimination against Jews and Judaism. The U.S. State Department has similarly raised concerns about the content of textbooks used in PA schools. In its 2009 Human Rights Report, the U.S. State Department wrote that after a 2006 revision of textbooks by the PA Ministry of Education and Higher Education, international academics concluded that books did not incite violence against Jews but showed imbalance, bias, and inaccuracy. The examples given were similar to those given by IPCRI. The Center for Monitoring the Impact of Peace was reconstituted as the Institute for Monitoring Peace and Cultural Tolerance in School Education, Impact SE, and seems to have improved the quality of its work. It has published a number of evaluations of PA textbooks. The latest evaluation from 2011 concludes that the situation had not significantly improved, and that there were in fact many examples of incitement to hatred and demonization of Israel, conclusions not widely shared by other experts. In 2013 the results of a rigorous study, which also compared Israeli textbooks to PA textbooks, came out. The study was launched by the Council for Religious Institutions in the Holy Land, an interfaith association of Jewish, Christian, and Muslim leaders in Israel and the occupied territories. The study was overseen by an international scientific advisory panel and funded by the United States State Department. The Council published a report, Victims of Our Own Narratives? Portrayal of the Other in Israeli and Palestinian School Books. Most books were found to be factually accurate except, for example, through presenting maps that present the area from the river to the sea as either Palestine or Israel. Israeli schoolbooks were deemed superior to Palestinian ones with regard to preparing children for peace, although various depictions of the other as enemy occurred in 75% of Israeli, and in 81% of Palestinian textbooks, the study praised both Israel and the Palestinian Authority for producing textbooks almost completely unblemished by dehumanizing and demonizing characterizations of the other. Yet many troubling examples were given of both sides failing to represent each other in a positive or even adequate way. And the problem was more pronounced in PA textbooks. Neutral depictions of the other were found in 4% of Israeli and 15% of Palestinian textbooks. Overall negative or very negative representations of Palestinians occurred 49% of the time in Israeli state school books, 73% in Haredi school books, and in 84% of Palestinian textbooks. Highly negative characterizations were discerned in 26% of Israeli state school books and 50% of the Palestinian ones. Harsh critics of PA textbooks give similar examples, but weight them more heavily than IPCRI, the U.S. State Department and the Council for Religious Institutions in the Holy Land do. In addition, the critics point to subtle examples not picked up by these studies. Dr. Arnon Groys is perhaps the strongest academic critic. 
He had in the past conducted an independent research of Palestinian, Egyptian, Syrian, Saudi Arabian, Tunisian, and Iranian schoolbooks between 2000 and 2010, and was thus appointed to be a member of the Scientific Advisory Panel for the study from the Council for Religious Institutions in the Holy Land. He criticized the study and its results for the following Selection of the study material Highly demonizing pieces were not included, under the pretext that they were not explicit enough. Explicit denial, dot was not included too. Categorization methods. Real cases of ignoring the other deliberately without degrading him slipped away from scrutiny. False positive descriptions. The quality and depth of the analysis. There is no attempt to study the quotes more deeply and draw conclusions. The report considers jihad and martyrdom as values, which is acceptable academically, but it fails to evaluate their impact on the issues of war and peace. Groys concluded that the main question, namely, to what extent is this or that party engaged in actual education for peace, if at all, has not been answered by the report itself. All in all there seems to be broad agreement that there is continual improvement in the textbooks used by UNRWA. But very strong disagreement about whether the improvement is sufficient. In response to a critical report written in 2009 by former UNRWA General Counsel James G. Lindsay, fellow researcher for Washington Institute for Near East Policy John Jing, head of UNRWA Gaza, said, As for our schools, we use textbooks of the Palestinian Authority. Are they perfect? No, they're not. I can't defend the indefensible. UNRWA has taken many steps since the year 2000 to supplement the PA curriculum with concepts of human rights, nonviolent conflict resolution, and tolerance. According to the UNRWA website, we have been delivering human rights education in our schools since 2000 to promote non-violence, healthy communication skills, peaceful conflict resolution, human rights, tolerance, and good citizenship. In May 2012, the agency endorsed its new Human Rights, Conflict Resolution and Tolerance policy to further strengthen human rights education in UNRWA. This policy builds upon past successes, but also draws from international best practices and paves the way to better integrate human rights education in all our schools. The HRCRT policy reflects the UNRWA mandate of quality education for Palestine refugees and sets out a common approach among all UNRWA schools for the teaching and learning of human rights, conflict resolution and tolerance. The vision of the policy is to provide human rights education that empowers Palestine refugee students to enjoy and exercise their rights, uphold human rights values, be proud of their Palestinian identity, and contribute positively to their society and the global community. Quote, quote. Topic. Relationship with Hamas In April 2013 Palestinian journalist, Hazem Belusha, summed up years of tension between UNRWA and Hamas. Agency in Gaza faces increasing difficulty in carrying out its work, as the Hamas-led government claims some of its activities are not in line with the Strip's Islamic culture and values. According to The Guardian, Hamas has in some cases threatened UN staff in Gaza. The former UNRWA chief in Gaza, John Jing, has survived two assassination attempts. Peter Hansen, UNRWA's former Commissioner General, 1996 to 2005, caused controversy in Canada in October 2004 when he said in an interview with CBC TV, "Oh, I am sure that there are Hamas members on the UNRWA payroll and I don't see that as a crime." Hamas as a political organization does not mean that every member is a militant and we do not do political vetting and exclude people from one persuasion as against another. We demand of our staff, whatever their political persuasion is, that they behave in accordance with UN standards and norms for neutrality. Hansen later specified that he had been referring not to active Hamas members, but to Hamas sympathizers within UNRWA. 
In a letter to the agency's major donors, he said he was attempting to be honest because UNRWA has over 8,200 employees in the Gaza Strip. Given the 30% support of Hamas in Gaza at the time, and UNRWA's workforce of 11,000 Palestinians, at least some Hamas sympathizers were likely to be among UNRWA's employees. The important thing, he wrote, was that UNRWA's strict rules and regulations ensured that its staff remained impartial UN servants. However, he was retired from United Nations service against his will on the 31st of March 2005. James G. Lindsay, a former UNRWA general counsel and fellow researcher for Washington Institute for Near East Policy, published a report for WINEP in 2009 in which he criticized UNRWA practices. One of his conclusions was that UNRWA is not ousting terrorists from its ranks. UNRWA has taken very few steps to detect and eliminate terrorists from the ranks of its staff or its beneficiaries, and no steps at all to prevent members of organizations such as Hamas from joining its staff. UNRWA has no pre-employment security checks and does not monitor off-time behavior to ensure compliance with the organization's anti-terror rules. No justification exists for millions of dollars in humanitarian aid going to those who can afford to pay for UNRWA services. In 2013 Lieutenant Col. Ret. Jonathan Dehoa Halevi, senior researcher of the Middle East and Radical Islam at the Jerusalem Center for Public Affairs, asserted that the UNRWA Workers' Union has been controlled in practice by Hamas for many years, according to the Jerusalem Post and Fox News Hamas won a teachers' union election for UN schools in Gaza in 2009. UNRWA has strongly denied this and notes that Staff elections are conducted on an individual, not party list, basis for unions that handle normal labor relations, not political, issues. In addition, John Jing, the Gaza head of operations, said in a letter dated 29 March 2009 that employees must not be under the influence of any political party in the conduct of their work. It has also been claimed that in 2012, the Hamas professional list again won a staff union election in UNRWA. The professional list is led by alleged senior Hamas activist Suhel al-Hind. More than 9,500 UNRWA employees in the Gaza Strip participated, this represented more than 80% turnout. The professional list won three UNRWA workers groups, the employees, teachers, and services unions. Topic. Schools. It has been reported that Hamas has interfered with curriculum and textbooks in UNRWA schools, for example, in 2009 it caused UNRWA to suspend a decision to introduce Holocaust studies in its schools. One of UNRWA's flagships has been gender equality and integration. But Hamas militants have firebombed UNRWA mixed gender summer camps, and in 2013 Hamas passed a law requiring gender segregation in schools for all pupils nine years of age and older in Gaza. The law does not apply to UNRWA schools. Elhanan Miller, Arab affairs reporter for the Times of Israel, wrote in February 2014 that Hamas was bashing UNRWA's human rights curriculum, saying that it included too many examples and values foreign to Palestinian culture and had too much emphasis on peaceful resistance rather than armed resistance. In this case UNRWA refused to be swayed. Spokesman Chris Gunnis, UNRWA has no plans to change its education programs in Gaza. Human rights are taught in all UNRWA schools from grades 1 through 9, discussing the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. UNRWA's education system takes as its basis the curriculum taught by the PA and so we use PA textbooks in preparing children in Gaza for public examinations. In addition, we enrich our education programs in Gaza with an agreed human rights curriculum which has been developed with the communities we serve, with educationalists, parents groups, teachers associations, staff members and others. We have done our utmost in developing these materials to be sensitive to local values while also being true to the universal values that underpin the work of the United Nations. However, after a few days, UNRWA consented to temporarily suspending the use of only the books used in grades 7 to 9, continuing to use the books used in grades 1 to 6, pending further discussions.
Topic: <laughs> Camps and sports. Hamas has denounced UNRWA and Jing, accusing them of using their summer camps to corrupt the morals of Palestinian youth. Hamas also advised UNRWA to re examine its curriculum to ensure its suitability for Palestinian society, due to the mixing of genders at the camps. In September 2011, it was reported that, under pressure from Hamas, UNRWA has made all its summer camps single sex. Hamas has its own network of summer camps, and the two organizations are regarded to be vying for influence with Gazan youth. Islamic Jihad has also run summer camps since 2013. UNRWA did not operate its summer camps for summer 2012 and summer 2014 due to a lack of available funding. Hamas has filled this void and now is the direct provider of summer activities for about 100,000 children and youths. In 2013, UNRWA cancelled its planned marathon in Gaza after Hamas rulers prohibited women from participating in the race. In 2013, Israeli media outlets aired a video documenting UNRWA funded summer camps where children are being taught to engage in violence with Israelis. The video airs speakers telling campers, with God's help and our own strength we will wage war. And with education and jihad we will return to our homes." A student is also shown on camera describing that, "...the summer camp teaches us that we have to liberate Palestine." UNRWA denies that the video shows UNRWA summer camps and instead shows footage of camps that were not operated by UNRWA. Following the release of the film, UNRWA released a statement that read, in part, UNRWA has conducted a lengthy and detailed investigation into the film and we categorically reject the allegations it contains. The film is grossly misleading and we regret the damage it has caused to UNRWA and the United Nations. The filmmaker concerned has a history of making baseless claims about UNRWA, all of which we have investigated and demonstrated to be patently false. It has long been the practice of the filmmaker to show non-UNRWA activities and portray them as activities of UNRWA. He has done this again and we again reject his allegations. Our repeated rejection of his falsehoods is a matter of public record. The main accusation in the film is that incitement is promoted during UNRWA summer camps. The summer camp shown in the West Bank was not affiliated with or organized by UNRWA. The only UNRWA summer activities actually depicted are those shot in Gaza. However, our investigation of the film has revealed that absolutely nothing anti-Semitic or inflammatory was done or said in the scenes filmed in Gaza. In addition, those interviewed in the film are presented with captions that identify them as UNRWA staff members. However, only one of those interviewed is an UNRWA staff member. The comment she makes does not violate UNRWA's neutrality policy. UNRWA is committed to fostering human rights and tolerance, and teaches these values through the curriculum in its schools. UNRWA is one of the few organizations that has implemented human rights and conflict resolution training for millions of Palestine refugee children in the complex political environment of the Middle East for over 12 years. Topic. UNRWA facilities being abused by Hamas militants In 2003, Israel released to newspapers what the New York Times called a damning intelligence report. Citing interrogations of suspected militants, the document claims that UNRWA operations being used as cover for Palestinian terrorists, including smuggling arms in UN ambulances and hosting meetings of Tanzim in UN buildings. UN officials responded, according to the NY Times, by saying that it is Israel that has lost its objectivity and begun regarding anyone who extends a hand to a Palestinian as an enemy. The Israel Defense Forces released a video from May 2004, in which armed Palestinian militants carry an injured colleague into an UNRWA ambulance, before boarding with him. The ambulance driver requested that the armed men leave, but was threatened and told to drive to a hospital. UNRWA issued a plea to all parties to respect the neutrality of its ambulances. On 1 October 2004, Israel again lodged accusations against UNRWA. 
The video documentation was not convincing, and the Israeli military changed some of its earlier statements and conceded the possibility that the object could have indeed been a stretcher, but did not offer the apology Hansen had demanded. The Israeli army circulates footage taken on the 29th of October 2007 showing three militants firing mortars from UNRWA Boys School in Beit Hanun, Gaza. The militants were able to enter due to the fact that the school was evacuated at the time because of the war, according to former Israeli ambassador to the United Nations Dor Gold. Although education was one of the fields in which UNRWA was supposed to provide aid, the agency did nothing to alter Palestinian educational texts that glorified violence and continuing war against Israel. This has been found to be false in several U.S. State Department reports such as Brown and PICRI cited above. On 4 February 2009, UNRWA halted aid shipments into the Gaza Strip after it accused Hamas of breaking into a UN warehouse and stealing tons of blankets and food which had been earmarked for needy families. A few days later, the UN resumed aid after the missing supplies had been returned. On the 5th of August 2009, the IDF accused Hamas of stealing three ambulances that had just been transferred through Israel to the UNRWA. The UNRWA spokesman denied the claim. A week later, Hamas confirmed it confiscated the ambulances due to bureaucratic reasons. A UNRWA spokesman also confirmed this but soon retracted this admission and denied the incident, even publicizing a photo it claimed was of one of its officials with the ambulances. Al-Fahora violence On 7 January 2009, UNRWA officials alleged that the prior day, in the course of the Gaza War, the Israel Defense Forces shelled the area outside a UNRWA school in Jabalia, Gaza, killing more than 40 people. The IDF initially claimed it was responding to an attack by Hamas gunmen hiding in the compound, but upon re-examination, said that an errant shell had hit the school. Maxwell Gaylord, the UN humanitarian coordinator, stated that the UN would like to clarify that the shelling, and all of the fatalities, took place outside rather than inside the school. UNRWA has consistently rejected the allegation that militants used the agency's installations during the Gaza War in 2008-2009. These accusations have been published by some media outlets, although they are sometimes retracted. In 2012 when on two occasions, Israel Channel 2 TV, the most popular network in Israel apologized and issued a retraction of these allegations, during the 2014 Israel-Gaza conflict, UNRWA spokesman reported in July that weapons were found in three vacant UNRWA schools which had been closed for the summer. UNRWA strongly condemned the activity as a flagrant violation of the inviolability of its premises under international law and UNRWA staff were withdrawn from the premises. It appears, however, that UNRWA returned weapons to the local government, meaning Hamas. In July 2014, three Israeli soldiers died from a booby trap in a clinic. Initially it was reported to be an UNRWA clinic but the IDF shortly thereafter retracted the claim thought it was noted that it had an UNRWA sign on it. The UNRWA sign on the building therefore may have been stolen and placed there by someone, perhaps seeking to protect the building. Even though the claim of the booby trapped UNRWA clinic proved to be false, it has been repeated on several occasions by vocal UNRWA opponents, including at an official hearing of the U.S. House Committee on Foreign Affairs on 9 September 2014. During the hearing, Hamas Benefactors, a network of terror. Jonathan Shanzer from the Foundation for Defense of Democracies told the committee that UNRWA was allowing for the building of tunnels, these commando tunnels, underneath their facilities in my opinion very much needs to be investigated. It is unclear whether Shanzer knew he was misleading the committee, though he also repeated the assertion at an event hosted by the Foundation for Defense of Democracies entitled The Israeli-Palestinian Conflict. On 13 August 2014, where he stated there was at least one booby-trapped tunnel under one of its facilities. Topic. Social media and incitement 
According to UN Watch, at least 10 different UNRWA employees used social media in October 2015 to incite Palestinian stabbing and shooting attacks against Israelis, with one calling on Facebook to stab Zionist dogs. UN Secretary General Spokesperson said that more than 90 Facebook pages violating UNRWA social media rules were removed. Some of the posts were made by imposters or former UNRWA employees and some by current UNRWA staff. In addition, an UNRWA spokesperson was quoted in the foreword as saying that staff members had been sanctioned, including loss of pay, and that remaining allegations were under assessment. He also noted that, in some cases, we have determined the alleged UNRWA staff are not in fact UNRWA employees or are no longer UNRWA employees. Topic. Investigations and calls for accountability and or reform Many critics of UNRWA recognize that the refugees registered with UNRWA need massive help. They realize that the agency needs support, with more oversight and coordination with the Palestinian Authority. And they believe that disbanding UNRWA at this time or in the very near future is not a relevant goal. Writing in the Middle East Monitor in April 2012, Karen Koning Abuzaid, a former Commissioner General of the UNRWA 2005-2009, argued that, UNRWA needs support not brickbats. She concludes, Even those who scrutinize it most closely and challenge it most severely are those who also ensure that its programs receive adequate funding. They, like others who view the agency more positively, realize that UNRWA makes a major contribution to stability in the Middle East. Writing in the Times of Israel on 31 July 2014, David Horovitz concludes in his analysis that although Israel has many complaints against UNRWA, it is not interested in abolishing it. Already at that point, less than four weeks into the 2014 war, there were 225,000 displaced persons within Gaza and nobody to help them in a major way except UNRWA. And Horovitz notes, Israel takes into account that UNRWA, like all international organizations operating in Gaza, is being closely watched by Hamas for signs that it is not sufficiently critical of Israel. Credible calls for accountability and or reform tend to follow this line of reasoning, as exemplified below. 2004 investigation by the United States Congress the United States government financed a program of Operation Support Officers, part of whose job is to make random and unannounced inspections of UNRWA facilities to ensure their sanctity from militant operations. In 2004 the U.S. Congress asked the General Accounting Office to investigate media claims that taxpayers' dollars given to UNRWA had been used to support individuals involved in militant activities. During its investigation, the GAO discovered several irregularities in its processing and employment history. James G. Lindsay. On the basis of his 2009 analyses for WINEP, referred to in previous sections, former UNRWA General Counsel James G. Lindsay and fellow researcher for Washington Institute for Near East Policy made the following suggestions for improvement. UNRWA should make the following operational changes, halt its one-sided political statements and limit itself to comments on humanitarian issues, take additional steps to ensure the agency is not employing or providing benefits to terrorists and criminals, and allow the UN Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization UNESCO, or some other neutral entity, to provide balanced and discrimination-free textbooks for UNRWA schools. Andrew Whitley, director of the UNRWA Representative Office at UN Headquarters in New York, said, The agency is disappointed by the findings of the study, found it to be tendentious and partial, and regrets in particular the narrow range of sources used. UNRWA's Jerusalem Spokeson Chris Gunnis stated that UNRWA rejects Lindsay's report and its findings and claimed that the study was inaccurate and misleading, since it makes selective use of source material and fails to paint a truthful portrait of UNRWA and its operations today." In response to the criticism of his report from UNRWA, Lindsay writes, Despite repeated requests from the author, the agency declined to identify the alleged weaknesses on the grounds that our views and understanding of UNRWA's role, the refugees and even U.S. 
Policy are too far apart for us to take time, time that we do not have to enter into an exchange with little likelihood of influencing a narrative which so substantially differs from our own. Thus, the paper has not benefited from any input by UNRWA, whether a discussion of policy or even correction of alleged errors. Canadian redirection of funds from UNRWA to specific PA projects. In January 2010, the Government of Canada announced that it was redirecting aid previously earmarked to UNRWA, to specific projects in the Palestinian Authority that will ensure accountability and foster democracy in the PA. Victor Taves, the President of Canada's Treasury Board, stated, Overall, Canada is not reducing the amount of money given to the PA, but it is now being redirected in accordance with Canadian values. This will ensure accountability and foster democracy in the PA. Previously, Canada provided UNRWA with 11% of its budget at $10 million Canadian annually. The decision came despite positive internal evaluations of the agency by CIDA officials. The Canadian decision put it very much at odds with the US and EU, which maintained or increased their levels of funding. Some suggested that the decision also cost Canada international support in its failed October 2010 effort to obtain a seat on the UN Security Council. Documents obtained from the Canadian International Development Agency revealed that even the Government of Israel opposed the Canadian move, and had asked Ottawa to resume contributions to UNRWA's General Fund, UNRWA Reform Initiative. An initiative to reform UNRWA was announced by the Centre for Near East Policy Research in March 2014. The centre carries out research and, through its Israel Resource News Agency, investigative journalism and research in cooperation with a wide variety of organisations and researchers, such as the Middle East Forum, which has published an entire issue of Middle East Quarterly discussing the challenges facing UNRWA. The main thrust of the UNRWA Reform Initiative is to present documentation of problems with UNRWA to sponsor nations and organisations with the aim of increasing sponsor demands for accountability. UNRWA has stated on multiple occasions that the head of this initiative, David Bedeen, fabricates the information he publishes. 2014 Call for U.S. Investigation In August 2014 U.S. Senators demanded an impartial investigation into UNRWA's alleged participation in the 2014 Gaza-Israel conflict, accusing UNRWA of being complicit with Hamas. Members of the United States Senate are demanding an independent investigation into the role of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency during Israel's most recent war in Gaza with Hamas. While the letter does not call on the State Department to cut aid, the senators write that the American taxpayers deserve to know if UNRWA is fulfilling its mission or taking sides in this tragic conflict. Responding to the letter, a State Department spokesman said that the UN is taking proactive steps to address this problem, including deploying munitions experts to the Strip in search of more weapons caches. The international community cannot accept a situation where the United Nations, its facilities, staff, and those it is protecting are used as shields for militants and terrorist groups. State Department spokesman Edgar Vazquez told the Jerusalem Post, We remain in intensive consultations with UN leadership about the UN's response. There are few good solutions given the exceptionally difficult situation in Gaza. Vazquez continued, but nonetheless we are in contact with the United Nations, other UNRWA donors, and concerned parties, including Israel, on identifying better options for protecting the neutrality of UN facilities and ensuring that weapons discovered are handled appropriately and do not find their way back to Hamas or other terrorist groups. Topic. Relations with Israel After Israel captured the West Bank and Gaza in the June 1967 Six-Day War, Israel requested that the UNRWA continue its operations there, and agreed to facilitate them. Since then the relationship has been characterized as an uneasy marriage of convenience between two unlikely bedfellows that has helped perpetuate the problem both have allegedly sought to resolve. 
Immediately following the Six Day War, on 14 June UNRWA Commissioner General Drive, Lawrence Micklemore and political advisor to the Israeli Foreign Minister Michael Komei exchanged letters that has since served as much of the basis for the relationship between Israel and UNRWA. Commonly referred to the Komei Micklemore exchange of letters, the initial letter from Micklemore reiterates a verbal conversation between the two, stating that, at the request of the Israel government, UNRWA would continue its assistance to the Palestine refugees, with the full cooperation of the Israel authorities, in the West Bank and Gaza Strip areas. For its part, the Israel government will facilitate the task of UNRWA to the best of its ability, subject only to regulations or arrangements which may be necessitated by considerations of military security. In his responding letter, Komei wrote, I agree that your letter and this reply constitute a provisional agreement between UNRWA and the Government of Israel, to remain in force until replaced or cancelled. UNRWA has been criticized by the Israeli government and politicians for alleged involvement with Palestinian militant groups, such as Hamas. Israel has stated that Peter Hansen, UNRWA's former Commissioner General 1996 consistently adopted a trenchant anti-Israel line which resulted in biased and exaggerated reports against Israel. UNRWA has also lodged complaints, for example, Al-Aqsa Intifada 2000 allegations of Israeli interference with UNRWA operations during the Al-Aqsa Intifada, which started in late 2000. UNRWA often complained that Israeli road closures, curfews and checkpoints in the West Bank and Gaza have interfered with its ability to carry out its humanitarian mandate. The agency has also complained that large-scale house demolitions in the Gaza Strip have left over 30,000 people homeless. Israel justifies the demolitions as anti-terror measures. November 2002 Allegation that an Israeli sniper killed UNRWA employee in November 2002 Ian Hook, a British employee of UNRWA, was shot and killed by an IDF sniper while working in the Janin refugee camp, during an operation to locate a Palestinian militant suspected of masterminding a suicide bombing that killed 14 people earlier in 2002. Peter Hansen, head of UNRWA at the time criticized the killing. Israeli snipers had sights. They would have known who the two internationals non-Palestinians were. They did not dress like Palestinians. Death of UNRWA staff member in Kalandia refugee camp in August 2013, UNRWA released a statement that accused Israel of killing one of its staff members and injuring another in the Kalandia refugee camp during a raid. According to the release from 26 August 2013, UNRWA deeply regrets to confirm that one of its staff members, a 34-year-old father of four, was shot dead by Israeli forces and killed instantly in an operation in Kalandia refugee camp in the West Bank at approximately 7 o'clock this morning. Credible reports say that he was on his way to work and was not engaged in any violent activity. He was shot in the chest. Another UNRWA staff member, a sanitation laborer, was shot in the leg during the same operation and is in a stable condition. 2014 Israel-Gaza conflict During the 2014 Israel-Gaza conflict, there were many accusations by Israel, and many rebuttals by UNRWA. For example Israel's Channel 2 claimed in a report that an UNRWA ambulance was used to transport militants. It later retracted that claim, after being confronted with incontrovertible evidence. In the words of UNRWA, Israel damaged or destroyed a number of UNRWA facilities claiming that they were used for war purposes and thus legitimate targets. According to a UN report, Israel struck seven Gaza shelters, which led to at least 44 Palestinians killed and at least 227 injured. It also said Palestinian groups stored weapons in three schools and likely fired rockets from two of them. UN Sec Gen Ban Ki moon condemned the use of shelters as a weapons depot. UNRWA schools and personnel were in the line of fire during the war, even as 290,000 people were staying in UNRWA schools being used as shelters. During one of the many ceasefires in the war, UNRWA announced nine UNRWA staff members were killed in Israeli shelling of shelters. 2017 calls for dismantlement, following tunnel under schools in June 2017, UNRWA employees discovered a tunnel running underneath the Magazi Elementary Boys A and B School and the Magazi Preparatory Boys School. 
According to UNRWA spokesperson, the tunnel had no entry points in the school premise, but runs underneath the school. UNRWA stated it intended to seal the tunnel, and that is protested to Hamas. Hamas denied it was involved, and requested clarifications from other armed factions that denied involvement as well. Following the tunnel discovery, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has stated that UNRWA should be dismantled and reincorporated in other UN agencies. In response UNRWA's spokesperson said only the United Nations General Assembly could change UNRWA's mandate, and further stated in Hebrew on Israeli radio that if UNRWA is gone from Gaza that 2 million people will turn into as Islamic State supporters, the peace initiative between Israel and Palestine promoted by the Trump administration, and overseen by the president's nephew Jared Kushner, advocates the winding down of UNRWA through a campaign to disrupt it, and aims to strip Palestinians of their refugee status, according to emails leaked to Foreign Policy magazine. According to Kushner UNRWA perpetuates a status quo, is corrupt, inefficient and doesn't help peace. Monies to UNRWA would be rechanneled to Arab countries in the area in the expectation that they would eventually absorb the Palestinian refugees resident in their states. Both Kushner and Nikki Haley propose a cut-off of U.S. funding for the organization, a proposal opposed by the State Department, the Pentagon, and the U.S. intelligence community, on the grounds that any such move would only fuel violence in the Middle East. Topic. See also List of Directors and Commissioners General of the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East 2014 Israel-Gaza Conflict Israel, Palestine, and the United Nations Israeli-Palestinian Conflict Nahr al-Baird Palestine Refugee Palestinian People Palestinian Textbook Controversy United Nations Fact-Finding Mission on the Gaza Conflict Topic. Bibliography UNRWA, UNHCR 2007. The United Nations and Palestinian Refugees. PDF. UNDPI 2008. The Question of Palestine and the United Nations. PDF. DPI, 2499. Gunnis, Chris. 2011. Exploding the Myths, UNRWA, UNHCR and the Palestine Refugees. Ma'an News Agency.